Greetings to all of our friends around the world and welcome once again to Kourou, the home of the Ariane family for today's live broadcast of Ariane Space Flight number 239. Happy you all could be with us for the mission tonight, a double launch. We're launching two satellites, or two old friends, both on the satellite operator side as well as on the satellite builder side. To get us started, we go first for some opening words to Ariane Space Chief Executive Stefan Israel. Dear customers and partners, ladies and gentlemen, Ariane Space is delighted to welcome you again to the CAG, where we have been working hard the last three weeks to position ourselves to perform this Ariane 5 mission, the fifth of the year, with our heavyweight vehicle. We are back on track. For this mission, we are going to launch two key satellites for our customers and partners. Intelsat 37E for the American operator Intelsat. The satellite has been manufactured by our long-standing partner Boeing Space Systems. BSAT 4A for the Japanese operator BSAT. The payload has been built by another long-lasting partner, Space Systems Loral. Thanks to Intelsat and BSAT for your trust. Ion 5 is now on the launch pad after having been transferred yesterday. All the operations linked to the final condon went well, so we should be in a position to launch at 6.47 p.m., the time of the opening of the launch window, which will last 38 minutes. The overall performance to GTO required for this launch is 10 tons, 838 kilo. As you know, the liftoff occurs 7 seconds after the H0 at the initiation of the boosters. Ion 5 will then head towards the east to separate the satellites on an elliptical orbit inclined at 6 degrees with respect to the equatorial plane. The perigee altitude will be 250 km and the apogee altitude will be 35,706 km. Intelsat 37E will separate first 29 minutes and 48 seconds after liftoff. BSAT 4A will then separate 17 minutes and 25 seconds later. Our launch is imminent. Go Ariane 5, go Intelsat 37A and BSAT 4A, and of course, enjoy the show. We're just under 12 minutes until liftoff. We're on time and we're on target. Our broadcast coming to you live, as always, from the Jupiter Mission Control Center, which is the nerve center and the heart of the space base here in Kourou. All the action is about to get underway, so we hope you'll settle in and come along for the ride. We want to look next at the green status panels. If we can get them up on the screen, they are a real-time summary of the different launch services provided uh, by the base. You saw them in the back there. There they are on, on the right. We check them from time to time during the first part of the mission before lifting off. Everything green now as it should be. If there's a problem, we get a red. Ariane 5 is the reliable workhorse vehicle and the senior member of the Ariane family designed for heavier satellites and like tonight's mission for dual launches. She first flew back in 1996 and has since become the standard bearer of Europe's space efforts carrying on the legacy built by her predecessors Ariane's 1 through 4, a history that goes back to 1979. We want to take a look outside, take a first look at the uh, launch vehicle. If you're not familiar with Ariane 5. There are two versions. The one we're using tonight stands 54 meters tall and is in two parts. They call them composites here, a lower composite and an upper one. The lower including the main stage and the two boosters, the upper composite consisting of the two satellites, the vehicle equipment bay where the computers are. It flies on a single engine as does the lower stage. We'll be describing each in turn as it's functioning. The two satellites there, Intelsat in the upper berth is the heaviest, will be separated first. In the lower berth, BSAT, for due to be separated at plus 47 minutes and 14 seconds. Countdown proceeding normally. 10 minutes to go to lift off with Intelsat 37E and BSAT 4A. Countdown, by the way, is not just a simple three, two, one liftoff. The professionals here say it's the most intense part of the campaign in Jupiter, for instance, where we are. An enormous amount of information is coming in from all points across the base, like the green status panels that we saw. And up at the Launch Control Center, where we're gonna go in just a minute, they are carrying out enormous number of operations under rather difficult conditions. Key players who make the mission happen, this is the Ariane Space High Command, led by Luce Fabriguet, whom you just saw, 
with Sir Roland Lagier, the chief technical officer. They'll make the call should anything unexpected come up, either before or during the mission. You might see them on the phones, consulting with their teams here at the base or back in Europe. We want to go to a brief presentation of the mission, maybe some things you might want to look out for. After liftoff, you'll see the launcher climb vertically for 13 seconds, then rotate east and head out over the Atlantic, separating the boosters at 2 minutes and 22 seconds after ignition, separating the fairing a minute later at an altitude of 111 kilometers, speed now 2.3 kilometers per second. At plus nine minutes, the main stage is separated, splashes down in the Atlantic. The upper stage takes over, powering the vehicle to the point where she can separate the satellites. She has reached maximum speed now, 9.3 kilometers per second. Intelsat 37E will be separated at plus 29 minutes and 48 seconds. Then the SILDA, that's the structure that lets us carry a second passenger, is released. The composite is spun up to the position demanded by BSAT. And finally, BSAT 4A will be separated at plus 47 minutes after liftoff. Eight minutes on the next to the last Ariane 5 launch of this year. The launcher waiting for her moment in the sun and speaking about the weather, it's been pretty good all week. We've had some black clouds this morning at about 8.30, but they're gone. The six o'clock weather check last night showed good conditions for liftoff, so we should have good visibility. Launch window tonight, 38 minutes. Total mission time, 47 minutes. Two other people you'll be seeing today, the mission director, Didier Saeed, working alongside the range operations manager, also called the DDO. This woman, Fleur Lefebvre, tonight. You'll be hearing her a lot. The DDO makes all the key announcements on the major milestones, both during the countdown and during the flight. And she will shortly call out the seven minute mark. À tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. She's going to call out the seven minute mark. À tous de DDO, rouge ensemble de lancement. And she has just called a red. You can see it on the screen in the back. So we stop the countdown. A red has come up. As you can see, the countdown momentarily holding. À tous de DDO, arrêt du décompte suite à un rouge ensemble de lancement. Que tous les moyens restent prêts pour la reprise de la chronologie à H0-7 minutes en cas de retour au vert. We have a momentary hold in the countdown and we should be holding and ready to resume the countdown. What happens uh, when we have a red, as we mentioned before, we have the green status panels and you see a red on the launch zone here. A red is uh, like a stop sign. What happens when we see a stop sign, we stop and think. It's a normal procedure. It's built in to the system. And people are checking to see what the problem is and they're trying to fix it, and as soon as they fix it, we will be back once the countdown has been resumed. So sit tight, don't go away. We'll be right back when the countdown resumes. À tous de DDO, suite au retour au vert des, de l'ensemble de lancement, le nouvel H0 visé est 21h56 minutes TU. Le TD redémarrera à 21h49 TU. À tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. Top page 0-7 minutes, reprise du temps des comptes. 
All right, you see, we're back in business. We've gone from red. À tous de DDO, le nouvel H0 visé est à 21h56 minutes TU, soit 18h56 minutes locales. We've gone from uh, red back to green. Whatever the problem was didn't hold us up for long. We're in the seven-minute mark again. This brings us into what is known as the automatic or the synchronized sequence, the final moments of the final countdown, a complex series of operations running right down to liftoff. Our stage is set. I'm going to go back to my broadcast booth while we're shifting the scenery. Take a look at a, at a film on the launch campaign to see how Ariane 5 is ready for her mission. The final phase of the launch campaign, which started on 18th of July, was a structural integration of the launcher, followed by the electrical and pneumatic checkout of the launcher integration building. After a technical exception, the launcher was transferred on its launch table to the final integration building on the 14th of August. An Intelsat 37E arrived in French Guiana with an Antonov plane in Cayenne Felix Ebo Airport. The satellite equipment was installed in the S5C North building to begin its preparation phase. Later on, the satellite was transferred to the fueling S5B building where the Boeing team proceeded to the fueling of the tanks. BSAT 4A arrived as well in French Guiana with an Antonov plane in Cayenne Felix Ebo Airport. BSAT 4A was installed in the S5C South building and began its preparation phase. The satellite was then transferred to the fueling S5A building where the SSL team proceeded to the fueling of the tanks. The combined operations between satellites and launcher began at D-11 with the Intelsat 37 e mating on the flight adapter. Then transferred to the final assembly building, the satellite was integrated on top of the SILDA and encapsulated by the fairing and at last mated on the upper part of the launch vehicle. On its side, BSAT 4A began the combined operations with launcher at D-9 in the S5A with flight adapter mating. After transfer to the bath, BSAT 4A was mated on top of the launcher and covered by the upper composite. The final preparations of the launcher for the flight as well as the payload encapsulation and the integration of the launcher were carried out. The pyrotechnic arming of the launcher was performed before the launcher in its review, which gave the authorization to transfer on the launch pad. Once the ground installations and the launcher are put into flight configuration, we shall conclude with the final chronology phase before liftoff. A special thank you goes to all the operational teams for their huge efforts and contribution to take us through this very smooth launch campaign so far. Joshua Jampel back in the booth. Just a word, a final word on the launch campaign to add to the film. Every campaign is special because the people involved change, of course, and with each campaign they're faced with special anomalies and requirements. For the rest, the procedures are pretty standard. Assembly the launcher is pretty regular. The green status panels on the right again you just saw, we mentioned them briefly before, the real-time summary of all the launch activities here in the space space, and as you see we're back to green. Some 1,700 people working around the space space in all. Our cameras are here in Jupiter, but many others busy at other sites. Another place that's very active is the launch zone, where the launch management teams are working under the direction of the launch operations manager, Klaus Zell, today you saw. Their day began at 7.30 this morning with their first operations. Right now, two teams working up there. One is responsible for the ground operations, the other for readiness of the Ariane 5. The launch site operations manager heads up one group. He coordinates with mission control for final authorization to launch. And when all the conditions are right, he then okays the automatic sequence at the seven minute mark, which we saw. In all, about 100 people up there working launch control, going over the final checks and verification on all parts of Ariane's launch system. Two and a half minutes to go to launch of the 95th Ariane 5 mission. And here in Jupiter, the VIPs and the invited guests are very shortly going to begin to make their ways outside to watch the liftoff. There are two terraces on either side of the building that gives a fine view onto the launch pad. Ariane 5's flight path takes her right over Jupiter, and when the skies are clear, you get quite a sight. 
This split screen image shows the propellant feeder arms in the middle of the launcher, liquid hydrogen on the left, liquid oxygen on the right. What are they doing? Well, they're putting propellant into the upper stage tanks. And you'll see these arms pull back at minus seven seconds, seven seconds before ignition. It's one of the last things you'll see. So we like to take a minute to mention it. And you see the yellow arms in the middle of the launch vehicle there extending from the gantry. The first weather check just before noon today local time gave the go-ahead to fill both the upper and lower stages with their liquid hydrogen and oxygen. A minute 20 seconds to go till the ninth launch of the year for Ariane Space as we enter the final quarter of the year. Coming up in the last minute and you'll hear the DDO call that out. A tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. One minute mark, 60 seconds, coming up. Top page zero moins une minute. So we're into the final, final moments of Final Countdown. Give us a chance to say hello to our friends at Intelsat in Washington, to our friends at BSAT in Tokyo, to the Boeing and SSL teams in Los Angeles and Palo Alto, California, locally to the Kourou Cinemari in Cayenne sites, to our industrial partners ISA and Kness, and to all of you following on the internet, we hope you're enjoying it. If you're not settled in, pull up a chair and enjoy the launch because we are going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO as she calls out the final seconds. Watch for the cryogenic arms to open. That sets the ball rolling at minus seven seconds. A tous de DDO, attention pour les décomptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage des deux EAP et décollage Ariane 239. And as the DDO calls out that all is working flawlessly on board, Ariane 5, right on time, begins her mission, lifting off with a lot of fire, as you saw, carrying her two new satellites. The two boosters are providing that 90, that's 90% of our thrust right normal. now. The DDO is saying all is fine on board. 776 tons is our weight, is our mass at liftoff. And to get that sort of mass off the ground, you need, of course, a lot of push. Ariane is burning five tons of fuel every second, two and a half tons in each booster every second. And the core stage burning another 300 kilos of fuel per second. Ariane 5 now following the program <laughs> the on the computer, which gives all the orders, including stage separations, which we're going to see in just a minute. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn and in detail so you can follow Ariane as she heads across the Atlantic eastward. Right now, the first flight phase, as we watch these wonderful pictures, La very clear. Est correct. La a single first est stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will each consume their 240 tons in just over two minutes. They are the first to be extinguished. You'll hear that from the DDO. Le pilotage est calme. This first flight phase using both cryogenic and storable propellant, a mix, cryogenic propulsion offers certain advantages over storable propellant, better, more precise performance. It can be turned off and on. And motors can function longer. Ariane's one, two, four owe their success to storable propellant, not cryogenics. You see the points of light burning. Those are the boosters and the core stage. And very shortly, you should be able to see the separation des deux EAP. La trajectoire est nominale. The DDO has confirmed extinction and separation of the boosters. There's the two orange points of light on either side. The booster is falling away. The white point of light in the middle is the core stage continuing to burn. The boosters will fall 500 kilometers from shore in a protected area. French Guiana chosen nominal. in part as a base for its opening on the ocean, on the Atlantic, launches posing no threat to local population. We'll have more on that a bit later on. 
The speed we need to inject a satellite is roughly 9 kilometers per second, 9,000 kilometers an hour. And you can see on the bottom right, our speed now is just over 2 kilometers per second. Our altitude is over on the left, over 100 kilometers up. We're getting close to separation of the fairing. There we are. Separation, separation coiffe, is given by normal. two pyrotechnic systems, one horizontal, one vertical. And you can see one half of the fairing falling away on the left, the other half out of camera range on the right. We can separate the fairing now, revealing Intelsat 37E to the elements. Why? Because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere, over 100 kilometers up, neither friction nor heating to disturb the passengers. We also discard any dead weight so we can maximize the launcher's performance. Fairing weighs La propulsion two and half est nominal. We mentioned earlier <clears throat> that the countdown was a complicated process and a long one. Final countdown actually begin, began about 11 hours ago this morning. We here saw only the final moments. First checks of the electrical services, for example, began 10 and a half hours ago. Filling of the lower stage began four hours ago with the liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. Filling of the upper stage began three hours ago with the same. La trajectoire fuel. est nominale. Ariane 5 is the heavy lift launcher, remember, the two other members of the family, Soyuz, lifting middle sized payloads, two and three tons and Vega, the light lift vehicle for missions of roughly one ton. With its family of launch vehicles, Ariane Space is the reference providing launches of any mass to any orbit at any time. Le pilotage est calme. Ariane Space, part of Europe's nominal. space effort, which is a three-way affair, among Ariane Space, ESA, the European Space Agency, and the French National Space Agency, CNES, you find them all here, along with the customers. Ariane Space in charge of operating the family of launchers and of marketing the launch services and the Ariane program. ESA funding new programs and CNES overseeing coordination of all space space operations. The Jupiter building and looking down into the fishbowl where the operational people are. It's the Jupiter's in two parts. The invited guests and VIPs on one side and the operational people there on the other. The Guyana Space Center, Europe's spaceport, certified ISO 14001 back in 2004, which means its activities meet the international environmental standards. This includes everything that goes on in the technical center, Jupiter, where we are, and the payload preparation units, the test bench for the boosters, and all the rest. Il reste We're going minutes to go de shortly de I hope, a to a replay of the launch. And you can re-experience those beautiful moments, those beautiful shots. Here is your replay. As Ariane lifted off just about uh, six minutes ago, this is the first of what we hope will be many replays. Seen from different locations, we have cameras at several of the half dozen observation sites that are stationed across the base. And they furnish us with shots from different angles. Here's another. The closest observation site is called Toucan, Toucan, like the bird, and that's where the VIPs usually are. Toucan is closest to the base. La trajectoire est nominale, la propulsion est correcte. As the DDO says everything is fine on board, we are in the second powered flight phase. The single engine core stage is burning now. The boosters have done their work. All of Ariane's trajectory. As we watch a third replay. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed, of course, to be followed from the ground. The launcher is sending radar and telemetry back, and a network of stations keeps constant watch on the health of all her systems. The launcher sending back radar and telemetry to the Earth, the ground stations picking up the signal. Telemetry is launch vehicle data. Le pilotage est calme. Information on 1,500, roughly 1,500 parameters is collected, transmitted back to the ground stations every second. And they record all the launcher's functions and vital signs throughout the launch. You see the list of the ground stations. Galio is behind us here in uh, Kourou. The point of light that's moving represents the launcher's trajectory. Natal Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Natal au Brésil. Tracking station over the border in our neighbor Brazil. Uh, 
the station run by the Brazilian Defense Department, running it for the CNES in an agreement with ISA. It sees the lower stage burnout and separation. And what do the ground stations like Natal do with all this information? You may be asking, well, that's a good question. Customers, very important, get immediate data on the spacecraft. Some data are analyzed in real time. Other data are studied after the flight to learn how the vehicle performed on its mission. A complete analysis is carried out about a week after each launch. So you can imagine the enormous archives this gives Ariane Space, a wealth of technical information going back to the very first launch of Ariane 1, which was on Christmas Eve, 1979. We're waiting now for confirmation of extinction of the lower stage. You'll see on the left, the nozzle will turn off. There it is, shutting down. And awaiting now separation of the fin lower de stage. De and principal separation of the lower stage. And ignition of the upper stage. Et separation de l'EPC. These three commands, coming right on time, given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. Allumage du l'étage supérieur cryotechnique. The lower stage falling away into the Atlantic. You see that thanks to our onboard camera. It'll fall off the Gulf of Guinea. So we're now into the third and final powered flight phase. The single upper stage engine will burn until plus 25 minutes, est nominal. or 16 minutes roughly. The job of the upper stage, excuse me, <clears throat> is to take the satellites to their injection point, to position them for separation, and then release them. That is its propulsion role. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. But she has a second role, and that comes during Ariane 5's ballistics phase, as they call it. That comes later in the flight, and we'll have more on that coming up. Tonight, Ariane space flight number 239, until set 37E and B set 4A, a standard double launch, two communication satellites. But throughout the long history of the Ariane launcher, and with the addition of Soyuz, and Vega in the recent years, Ariane Space has launched for all types of missions and all types of orbits. We have another film, first of a series of films coming up for you now. The fifth Ariane flight of this year will embark in its lower position, BSAT 4A. This satellite has been designed and built by SSL for the Japanese lead and broadcasting satellite operator BSAT. SSL is also our direct interface for the launch services, as BSAT 4A is being orbited as a part of a turnkey contract between BSAT and SSL. Ariane Space has launched all BSAT satellites since the creation of this Japanese operator reflecting the exceptional confidence of BSAT on our launch services, what make us very proud and honored. BSAT 4A is based on the highly reliable and well-proven 1300 bus of a space system LORAD. It will be the 64th satellite of this manufacturer to be orbited by Ariane Space, and there are three more in our backlog. We would like to thank BSAT and SSL for the confidence in Ariane Space. All the best for your LEOP, and see you soon for a future launch campaign. We mentioned that there are two different propulsion systems on Ariane 5. Cryogenics, that's very cold fuel, as used in the main stage, more efficient than solid propellant, which is used in the boosters. Basically, solids are for La getting us off the nominal, ground, the away from the pull of the Earth. The key parameter for the main stage is kinetic energy or acquiring speed, once out of the atmosphere, there's no more drag on the vehicle, and we can focus on thrust. Cryogenics, on the other hand, are, far, are for more precision orienting of the vehicle, and of course they also allow a stage to be reignited, but that's in the other version of Ariane, the one that's not being used tonight. One advantage of storable fuel is that it doesn't evaporate like the cryogenic fuel does. Storable propellant also cheaper. So you see, performance, security, and cost dictate which system is used. Soyuz works on kerosene and liquid oxygen, sort of semi-cryogenic, if you will. The Russians and the Americans have mastered this system, but the Europeans prefer cryogenics. 
Intelsat arrived here in French Guiana on August 2nd, went right to the satellite preparation buildings for its checks. BSAT arrived on August 4th. We saw a bit film on BSAT. Now a first look at Intelsat 37E. Intelsat 37E is the fourth satellite of the EPIC family to be launched on Ariane after Intelsat 29E and 33E, both launched last year, and Intelsat 32E earlier in 2017. And it is the 59th satellite to be launched for Intelsat by Ariane. After the launch last May of SES-15, a spacecraft in the Boeing 702SP series and of Viasat 2 launched in June and belonging to the 702HP family, we are now launching a 702MP. This perfectly illustrates the adaptation of the INSPAS family of launch vehicles to the various market needs. In OSAT 37E, it will provide service to the Atlantic Ocean region for South America, Africa and Europe, giving our customers more capacity and flexibility for interconnectivity for years to come. Ten minutes left in the upper stage burn. While you were watching the film, we were picked up by our next downrange tracking station, Ascension Island. Tiny island, 10 square kilometers in the South Atlantic, belongs to the UK. NASA had a station there till 1989. They closed it, and ESA decided to build its own. The French Guiana site, we started to mention, chosen in 1964 among 14 possibilities, including... Australia and Scandinavia when the French wanted to build a new base. They had been working in Hamagur, Algeria from 1947 to 1967. From this base in the Sahara they took their first steps in space. They tested solid and liquid propulsion engines, they launched their first missiles, their first sounding Le rockets, and finally a diamond that lifted France's first satellite in 1965. Here, in French Guiana, they found everything they were looking for, a large opening on the ocean. We have 50 kilometers of coastline, so we can fly both north and east. Low population density, 250,000 people in French Guiana. The site here, free from hurricanes, which can strike other parts of the world. Finally, it offers nearby hills where Les radar and telemetry facilities can be installed. Nominal. And we'll come back to that. For now, another look at our first passenger, Intel set. 37E with its CEO Steve Spengler. Thank you for joining us for the launch of Intelsat 37E, the fifth of our Intelsat Epic high throughput satellites. Today's launch continues the epic journey that we began in January of 2016. We now have coverage from the southern cone of South America, across North America, the Atlantic, and all of the Eurasian and African continents. We're advancing the Intelsat EPIC technology. Intelsat 37E includes new innovations that further our performance goals. The Intelsat 37E satellite features power sharing technology to optimize performance for specific applications and regions. This satellite also includes steerable beams to support high performance mobility and government applications in Africa, Europe, and the Americas. Intelsat 37E is also the first high-throughput satellite to offer full beam interconnectivity between C, KU, and KA beams. This unique feature, enabled by the digital payload, underscores the flexibility and high performance our customers have come to expect from the Intelsat EPIC fleet. This is especially relevant to our community at 342 degrees east, which includes many broadband and network service providers that will transition from the Intelsat 901 satellite. These customers are using the higher performance to achieve better business economics for applications ranging from 3G and 4G wireless network expansions to broadband for commercial shipping. On behalf of Intelsat's employees around the world, let me express sincere appreciation to our manufacturer Boeing and our launcher Ariana Space for their commitment to delivering a successful program for Intelsat. I'd also like to recognize the Intelsat team for their work on Intelsat 37E. All of your colleagues are proud of your technical excellence and leadership. We appreciate and applaud your efforts to make Intelsat 37E a success. Finally, thank you to our customers for taking this epic journey with us. Go Intelsat 37E! All's well on board. 
And we have been picked up by our next downrange tracking station in Libreville, as you can see on the screen. That's on the west coast of Africa in Gabon. Teal Ariane 3, the last downrange station, was in the Ivory Coast, a place called Akakro. For Ariane 4, we needed a new station farther east. Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Libreville au Gabon. The station receives telemetry for about a quarter of an hour and sees the upper stage burnout. And while we're on the subject of telemetry, there has been a slight loss of the telemetry signal today, which is quite normal. Sometimes it happens. The ground stations suffer a brief blackout due to the launcher's position. Tonight, there was a brief loss of the signal between Natal and Ascension Island. Minute, another between Ascension Island and Libreville of not even 20 seconds. We don't lose the information. It's stored on board the exact times and durations of the signal loss are programmed into the vehicle equipment bay. The telemetry unit is programmed to record the data it would normally be sending down to the ground station, and it's also programmed to start sending these data to the stations when the signal returns. So all is well there. We're going to turn our attention once again to Intelsat for a more detailed explanation La of the epic series. Five minutes to go in the upper stage burn, cut off due at plus 25 minutes and 28 seconds. Intelsat 37E is the 59th Intelsat launched by Arian Space. The relationship between the two companies goes back to 1983 when Arian Space orbited Intelsat 507. Intelsat 37E is the fifth in the Epic NG series and the fourth in the series launched by Arian Space. Launch tonight comes just over a year after we launched the Intelsat Charter with Intelsat 33E and 36 in August of last year. That was flight 232. And two more Intelsats remain in the space as the DDO says four more minutes in the upper stage burn. Intelsat 37E built by Boeing and is the 55th Boeing-made satellite to be launched by Ariane Space, the last being Viasat 2 on flight 237 back in June. And two more Boeing-built spacecraft remain to be launched, Horizon 3A and Viasat 3F1. We're coming to you from the Guyana Space Center live, the world's only dedicated commercial space space where Ariane Space operates the launcher family. Our next film explores the relationship between Intelsat and Ariane Space, as well as giving a look at the satellite's first maneuvers after separation. As you may imagine, the mission integration for this launch went very smoothly, as the VA-239 mission is a kind of repeat of the VA-232 mission of August last year, when we launched two satellites very similar to the ones of tonight, Intelsat 33E and Intelsat 36. Boeing, Intelsat, INSPAS and CSG have now been working together for more than 30 years. 
and we are obviously very proud of all the work accomplished over these years together. So thank you to Intelsat and Boeing teams for their confidence and we are looking forward to seeing you soon in crew. After spacecraft separation, Boeing will continue the mission through handover of the satellite to Intelsat. They will begin by acquiring the satellite after separation and preparing it for orbit raising to its orbital test slot. After testing is completed, the satellite will be moved to its final location and begin providing service. Once again, it's been my pleasure to work with Boeing and Arian Space on another successful launch campaign. This is my eighth mission with Arian Space and I look forward to many more in the future. So thanks again to all those involved in making this day happen and to all of our families who take care of things at home while we are away launching rockets. During the interviews, we were picked up by our last downrange tracking station, Malindi, in Kenya on the east coast of Africa. So you see, Ariane has crossed Africa in six minutes. That's at least as good as Puck. If you remember Midsummer Night's Dream, I'll put a girdle around the earth in 40 minutes. You do the calculations, I think Ariane does better than that. Malindi, there are actually two stations. Like Ariane 4 needed a new station, so did Ariane 5. So we opened a fifth tracking station for Ariane 5's second launch in 1997. It receives Ariane 5 data the longest for three hours after liftoff. It will see the upper stage burnout and both satellite separations. While we're waiting for the separation, for the cutoff of uh, the stage, this launch is the 292nd mission performed by the Ariane family and the 266th launch carried out by a member of the Ariane family from the Guyana Space Center. Intelsat 37E and BSAT 4A are the 564th and 565th satellites launched by Ariane Space. They are also the 192nd and the 193rd satellites to be launched on an Ariane 5. Total weight of our passengers today, 10 tons. Both satellites have 15-year lifespans. We're coming up on extinction of the upper stage engine. You will watch, you can see the nozzle on the left shut down and you'll hear the DDO confirm it. There we go. Ariane 5 has hit her maximum speed. Extinction de l'étage supérieur cryotechnique. Right, Trajectoire parfaitement nominale. Now with power shut down, you'll see our speed start to drop as we move into this new coasting phase. This is the lat last flight phase, the only one that's not powered. You see the speed is dropping already. We're at 9.2. Début de la manœuvre d'orientation au profit de la charge pilote Intelsat 37E. At plus 2948, her speed will be 8. 0.7 kilometers per second. When she releases the SILDA, that's the carrying structure for the second passenger, at plus 31 minutes and 54 seconds, she'll be flying at 8.4 kilometers per second. And when she separates BSAT at plus 47 minutes and 14 seconds, her speed will be down to 6.4 kilometers per second. We mentioned the launch replays earlier. We said there were several observation sites here in French Guiana scattered around the base, all named after local birds, Carapa, Agami, Ibis. And we talked about Toucan, which is the closest site to the launch pad at two kilometers, normally, where the invited VIP guests watch the launch from. There's one young fellow we want to mention. We hope he's following the launch. His name is Léo Mesfin, and he's a high school student from Ethiopia, 17 years old, the winner of the Utelsat Star Awards, which is a contest that encourages young people to explore innovative thinking in space technology. They had to write an essay this year imagining the role played by satellite technology in the future of Africa, and he had the winning essay. So, Leo, fin de la manoeuvre d'orientation au profit d'Intelsat 37E, trajectoire nominale. With the upper stage engine shut down, we have entered the coasting phase, but that doesn't mean that nothing's happening. The composite is being maneuvered and spun up in a series of 20 operations. You can see she's being moved there. These operations range in time from a few seconds to a few minutes. Now, why do we do this? Well, we have to separate the first satellite, Intelsat, in one direction, then the SILDA in a second direction, finally our second passenger in yet a third direction. 
Ariane's attitude and control system uses small thrusters to perform these maneuvers. That's what's going on right now. You might be able to see them popping on and off on the screen. There are 12 thrusters in all, four clusters of three on the outside of the upper stage. They use gaseous hydrogen to provide the thrust. Another place very busy tonight, the CVI, or the Quick Look Telemetry Display Control Center. These teams have all the means for receiving, processing, storing, and analyzing all the data coming in from the ground stations along Ariane's flight path. Remember we talked about the advantages of the French Guiana site. One was nearby hills where we can receive telemetry from the launcher. This is where those, where those uh, telemetry installations are. Right now the teams are following and analyzing all the key flight data coming in, and they're reporting the flight data of the launcher back to the teams here in Jupiter. All part of the great information flow from points across the base to mission control. Coming up on confirmation from the DDO on separation of our upper passenger, due in just a few seconds. This is always a moment of high concentration. The teams have gone through these procedures before, but it does call for tremendous focus. You don't want to say tense, but focused, concentrated, gives you an idea. All eyes on the computer screens and all ears on the phones as the operational people await confirmation of our satellite separation. Do it about 10 seconds. The DDO will confirm the separation and of course you'll be able to see it on the animation. And there we seem to have it waiting for the DDO's confirmation as the Separation Intelsat 37E. There it is. The DDO confirms it. The first good news of the evening. Successful separation by Ariane 5 of our first passenger Intelsat 37E right on time just off the east coast of Africa. Todd Shield looking very happy, right. Notice the people here in Jupiter politely holding their applause because the mission is not over. We still have to separate our final passenger, B set 4 a The first operations, now that Intelsat is up, the signal will be acquired by the Kumsan station in South Korea in about 27 minutes. Biprop transfer orbit will start that will take 12 days. It'll start from day two. You can see on the animation Intelsat drifting away from the mothership, eventually getting to our orbital slot. Start of deployments and acquisition and then in-orbit testing starts in about two weeks. Then she will start adrift to our operational longitude 342 degrees east. Next up is SILDA separation in about a minute. A final word on Intelsat established in 1964 Early Bird, you might remember, that was Intelsat 1, launched back in 1965. It was the world's first commercial communications satellite. Intelsat was privatized in 2001 after nearly 40 years as an intergovernmental organization. Intelsat signed to fly with Ariane Space even Manoeuvre before the company was formed nearly 40 years ago. It's a real sign of confidence. Turning to the SILDA now, which is the Ariane double launch system, that's the black structure on the left of the composite. We mentioned Ariane 5 known for double launches. She's the only commercial launcher capable of lifting two heavy satellites. We've done hundreds, each one requiring a SILDA, which lets us carry a second satellite. Fin de la manoeuvre d'orientation au profit du SILDA. There, we have right on time the separation of the SILDA. Again, the same Separation du système lancement double Ariane it away from the mothership, revealing to the elements BSAT 4A, which is due for its separation in about 15 minutes. BSAT, or the Broadcasting Satellite System Corporation, headquartered in Tokyo, 84 employees, majority shareholder NHK, Japan Broadcasting Corporation, contracted with Space Systems L'Oreal to build and launch BSAT 4A in 2015. BSAT 4A is the ninth satellite launched by Ariane Space for the Japanese operator. 
The Iran Space has launched all the BSAT Corporation satellites since its creation in 1993. For its first satellite, BSAT-1, was built by Hughes, which is now part of Boeing, in 1994-95, and Ariane Space launched it in 1997. BSAT-4A is also the 30th launch services contract for a commercial geostationary satellite that Ariane Space has won in Japan. Ariane Space has launched 29 satellites into geostationary transfer orbit for the nation's satellite operators and currently has about three-fourths, 75% of the market share in Japan and three more satellites remain to be launched for Japan in the manifest. BSAT-4A, built by SSL, Space Systems Lorale, in a turnkey contract for BSAT and is the 62nd satellite made by SSL or by its predecessors to be launched by Air and Space, the 64th satellite launched, which is based on an SSL platform. The last SSL satellite launched by Air and Space was a pair, actually, Star 1D1, JSAT, JCSAT-15, both built by SSL, launched on an SSL charter in December of last year. That was Flight 234. Both builders tonight have flown charters with us recently. are in the final stage of the mission called the ballistics phase. We are 12 minutes from separation of our second passenger, Ariane 5, performing flawlessly. We mentioned that we Manoeuvre have to separate the two satellites and the SILDA in three different directions. We also have to release them at three different altitudes. Intelsat was separated at 1,400 kilometers up, then the SILDA at 1,800 kilometers up, and BSAT will go in yet a third direction and a third altitude, 5,600 kilometers up, all this to avoid any risk of collision, of course. A word on SSL. 1957, the company was founded in the San Francisco Bay Area as a division of Philco. Began launching satellites in 1960. The following year, bought by Ford and renamed Ford Aerospace. In 1990, it acquired, it was acquired, sorry, by the Loral Corporation, renamed Space Systems. Laurel, and today it's one of the top providers of commercial satellites. Do you remember our mass at liftoff, 776 tons? What's left of that, do you think? The vehicle lost 240 tons of fuel in each booster. That was two minutes after liftoff. It used up all the 175 tons of fuel in the first stage, lost another 14 tons of dry mass that was the lower stage, lost the first passenger 6.4 tons, and the Silda half a ton. So what's left? The upper stage, empty of its fuel, that's four tons down from 19 when filled. The VEB, Vehicle Equipment Bay, weighs a ton. BSAT weighs three and a half tons, and its adapter, 140 kilos. So roughly added up, 8.5 tons, down from the original 776. Another look now at BSAT, and we'll be back with the end of the mission. BSAT is a leading broadcasting satellite operator in Japan. We provide digital HDTV services in 12 GHz BSS band all over the Japan 
using Visa 3A, 3B, and 3C. Visa 4A is a successor to Visa 3A and has 24 KU band transponders. Visa 4A will reinforce current Visa 3 free to provide robust and uh, reliable service with full redundancy. Furthermore, uh, Visa 4A will be used to provide 4K AK Ultra HDTV services. Regular service of the 4K AK is planned to be started in the end of 2018. Our first satellite, Visa 1A, was launched from Kuru in 1997. Since then, all of the Visa satellites were launched by Alliance Space. This is my third uh, launch campaign. I'm always impressed by a uh, well-organized and friendly team work of Alliance Space and CSV. Visa 4 is the first satellite we have purchased from SSL. We have been pleased with their established heritage and advanced technologies. We expect this satellite plays an important role in the 4K AK service in Japan. Back with you again. Grant Gould there. <clears throat> Separation of BSET in about nine minutes. Ariane Space having another busy year here at the spaceport. One reason is that launches here at the CSG are getting closer and closer together. This thanks to a shorter time between launches, less than 15 days between most of the six launches in the earlier part of the year and if you go back just over 12 months, Ariane Space has, for the first time, launched 14 times in that period, the dates being September 15th of last year, that was the seventh Vega flight, and tonight. And two more launches are set before the year is out, a Vega mission in November and another Ariane in December. There will be the third Vega and the sixth Ariane launches of the year to round out 2017. One interesting note, I bet you didn't know, among the names proposed in 1972 for what became Ariane were Phoenix, Lyra, Cygnus, Ganymede, Penelope, and Vega. Vega got rejected because at the time it was also the name of a Belgian beer, which is no longer made. The name of our Vega vehicle that's part of the Ariane family comes from in Italian Vettori Europeo di Generazione Avanzata, or New Generation European Vehicle. The vehicle equipment bay, you see, that's the white circle behind the satellite. This is the cockpit of the launcher, if you will. The VEB orchestrates all the flight commands. The piloting orders are given by its calculators and the electronic systems. And all the equipment in there, all the computers are doubled, which means there's a backup system for everything in case one breaks down or encounters any problems. The mission can continue. VEB weighs nearly a ton, 970 kilos. Our final film now, another look at BSET and its builder, La phase SSL. Est parfaitement nominal. I've been on site the past few weeks as we prepared BSET 4A for launch. BSET 4A is SSL's first uh, spacecraft program for BSET Corporation of Japan. It's been a delivery in orbit contract, whereas SSL is responsible for not only the spacecraft and the necessary ground control station upgrades to integrate BSET 4A into the rest of the fleet, but we're also responsible for launch services and launch services management. SSL has been providing launch services for many of our customers for many years now, back to NSTAR A, which launched in August of 1995 and an Arian Space provided uh, Arian 44P. I mean, many things have changed since our first delivery in orbit contract, but many things remain the same, such as SSL's ability to provide bundled turnkey satellite solutions that meet our customers' needs, including advanced spacecraft, including launch services. Another thing that hasn't changed since our first delivery in orbit contract is the excellent relationship SSL enjoys with Arian Space. This will be our 64th SSL-built spacecraft launch on an Arian Space launch vehicle, dating back to our very first one in 1983 on an Arian 1 for Intelsat, our co-passenger on this flight. A special thank you today to BSET Corporation for entrusting this important program to SSL. It's been our pleasure supporting your mission here at the launch site. You heard Grant Gould there. He's qualified to talk about the changes here at the space base. He knows Ariane Space and the Kourou site very well. He's been coming here, I believe, since the Ford Aerospace days. You're watching Ariane Space flight number 239, and if you just joined us, we've successfully released our first passenger. We're awaiting separation of our second passenger in about five minutes. 
Looking ahead to after separation, the satellites go to GTO, Geostationary Transfer Orbit, which will be the end of the Ariane mission, but life will be just be beginning, of course, for the passengers. Ariane puts satellites into a transfer orbit, and the satellites get to their final slots under their own power. And getting to the final orbit can use up a lot of the satellite's onboard fuel, and that fuel is its lifeline and its lifetime. Tonight's satellites have to live up to 15 years, sometimes it can be longer, which is why it's very important to save fuel when you can. Now this is often done, like tonight, by what they call optimization of the trajectory. Ariane is able to inject the two satellites closer to their final orbits, and this is possible due to the extra performance available in the Ariane 5. We're launching 10 tons tonight, so we're almost at the limit, but we can still use a part of this performance margin and La reduce the de mise en spin se poursuit of nominalement. the targeted orbit. From the satellite point of view, what does this mean? Well, the customers need to expend a lot less of their own onboard fuel to reach their final geosynchronous orbit. And the more you save on propellant getting there, of course, the longer you can remain in service up there. Something else you might not know. All the systems we've been talking about tonight on the launcher, the energy systems, propellant, batteries, everything, they all have a sell-by date. Yes, if they're not used by these limits, guess what? They get thrown out. There's a similar system on airplanes. There's a similar system in your car and, of course, on the butter in your refrigerator. It covers everything on Ariane from turbo pumps to screws. It applies to some of the clamp bands, for example, that hold the satellites in place inside the fairing because they work with a system of spring compression and the tension in the springs could go lax with time. They think of everything, don't they? We're still in what they call a coasting phase, also known as a free flying phase. And while we have a moment, we'll turn to our quiz question. See if anybody at Boeing or SSL can get this one. Are you ready? Ariane Space Quiz question number 239. This is not the first time that Boeing and SSL have flown together on an Ariane launch. When did it happen before? Again, Ariane Space Quiz question number 239. The two satellite manufacturers, Boeing and SSL, have flown together on an Ariane launch de before. Mise en spin se When did it happen? Or what were the two satellites? I'll give you a hint. It only happened once. I'll give you another hint. It wasn't very long ago. Think it over. We'll have the answer for you in a few minutes. Meanwhile, with two minutes to go so toward separation of BSAT, you may have heard Europe is developing the successor to Ariane 5. The decision was taken by the ESA Ministerial Council in late 2014 to develop Ariane 6. It will be a more market-driven vehicle, to meet market changes, including electrical propulsion. It will be, we are told, half the cost of Ariane 5 per kilo. It'll be a three-stage vehicle with two versions, two or four boosters. One they call the Ariane 6-2, or the institutional version, which will carry five tons. And another called the Ariane 6-4, or the commercial version, which will carry ten and a half tons to geostationary transfer orbit. First launch, 2020. Work on the base and the ground segment is well underway here if you've been here. The new pad is two and a half times as big as the Soyuz pad. And it's, it's going up between the Soyuz and the Ariane 5 pads. And at the same time, a new version of the light Vega launcher called the Vega C for Consolidated is being readied to fly her maiden voyage next year. We're waiting for confirmation of our second passenger. 47 minutes and 14 seconds is the time. For that, again, a moment of high concentration. The mood here in Jupiter is, as it was 16 minutes ago for Intelsat, focused. Because tonight represents years of work for many of these people. Across the base, everyone is attentive as we near separation. They await the DDO's confirmation. Separation Bsat 4 a Well, the applause and the smiles and the handshakes and the happy faces tells the story. 
The final good news, and you hear the applause now from the people here in Jupiter, Ariane 5 has delivered her second passenger, BSAT 4A, out over the Indian Ocean. Both satellites separated using transversal spin mode, you may have noticed. So from the tense minutes just moments ago, you can see the change here. Very buoyant all across the Space Center and, and at all the points and posts where people are following the launcher and the satellites. Work is just beginning, or soon will be, at the different ground stations for both Intelsat and BSAT and at other sites around the world where their first maneuvers are being monitored. Now that BSAT is up, her first maneuvers, acquisition in six minutes, also by the South Korean station in Kumsan. Two minutes after that, acquisition of, of the signal by the Australian station in Urala. And you see her making her way away from the mothership. Solar array deployment tomorrow, initial sun acquisition tomorrow as well. First Apogee motor firing in 25 hours. Apogee motor firings two to four from uh, days on day four, sorry, that's on September 30th. Trim motor firing, trajectory correction, days seven to nine as we watch another replay. October 3rd, three to five, and arrival at her in-orbit testing window on October 7th. So with all the good news, we await our post-launch, post-separation speeches, the podium being set up for our speakers, who will include first loose Fabregat of Arian Space, Todd Schild of Intelsat, Ron Peterson of Boeing, Lincoln Day of SSL. Some of these people are seated on the VIP side, this side of Jupiter, but Luce Fabregat has been working on the inside in the fishbowl and will shortly be making her way out to join us on this side of the glass. While we're waiting, answer the quiz question. This is not the first time Boeing and SSL have flown together on an Ariane space flight. When did they share a launch? Only once. Flight 232, August 24, 2016, the Intelsat Charter. The two satellites were Intelsat 33E, built by Boeing, Intelsat 36, built by SSL. So if you got the date or the number or the satellites, give yourself a round of applause and you'll get to hear the post-launch spe speeches. Meanwhile, up in space, what's happening with Ariane 5, you might be wondering. After separation of our second passenger, what's left of the composite is spun up again in a different direction for what's called passivation. This involves emptying first the liquid oxygen tank, then the liquid hydrogen tank of any remaining fuel. And this takes place at a much, much higher altitude than we've been talking about. It's between 7,000 and 9,000 kilometers up and represents the very end of tonight's Ariane mission but it is something we will not see. What we will see shortly is Luce Fabregat, who will make her way outside of the fishbowl over to the podium to begin the traditional series of speeches. The satellites were separated when the launcher moves roughly, at roughly nine kilometers per second, which is close to the speed at which the Earth turns. And you know, of course, that the Earth turns at 10 kilometers per second, or 36,000 kilometers an hour. And once they are released by Ariane, these satellites can get to that speed and to their proper altitude by firing their apogee motors. We talked about them, these motor firings are part of the early operations, usually occurring a few days after separation. And we mentioned that before. The next voice you hear, Luce Fabregat, she's at the podium for the first of the speeches. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I am Space is delighted to announce that Intelsat 37E and BSAT 4A have been separated as planned on the targeted geostationary transfer orbit. For the fifth time this year, and the 81st time in a row, success is here for IAN5 and its customers. Well done. Tonight, IAN5 delivered for two major customers with whom we enjoy strong relationships at the service of telecommunications. 
In the upper position, Intelsat 37E is the 59 satellite launched by Ion Space for the legacy operator Intelsat since 1983, representing half of all Intelsat satellites in operation today. For this long-lasting partnership, I would like to express my gratitude to Steve Spengler and Todd Sheep, who is here today. Tonight's flight comes after two Intelsat dedicated launches performed last year. With three more Intelsat satellites in our backlog, we will certainly continue on this successful path. Congratulations also to our longtime partner, Boeing Space Systems, who built Intelsat 37E with 55 Boeing produced satellites orbited since 87 by Ion Space and two more in our backlog, we will certainly continue to share other successes in the future. So many thanks to Boeing for your trust. In the lower position, BSAT 4A. Congratulations to the builder, SSL. This launch brings the total to 64 satellites based on an SSL platform, and we have three more SSL satellites in our backlog. So thanks to John Chelly and the whole SSS team in Palo Alto, as well as Lincoln Day, who graces us with his presence tonight. BSAT 4A is the ninth satellite entrusted by the Japanese operator BSAT to Iron Space since 1990. Doing so, all 100% of BSAT satellites in operation today have been launched by Iron Space. It's hard to do better. So, aligato gozaimasu to BSAT. Let's hope this latter success will open up to further opportunities. Many thanks to BSAT for your trust. Iron Space is proud of its privileged relationship with Japan. Since 1989, Iron Space has launched a total of 29 GTO satellites for Japanese operators, representing more than 75% of geo market share in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, this ninth successful flight of the year, the fifth with an IM5, is also the 81st success in a row for our heavy launch vehicle. So let me congratulate all our partners for today's success, ESA and all the member states of the IAN program, whose support is essential, IAN Group, IAN 5 Prime and first shareholder of IAN Space, CNES, IAN 5 Design Authority, and our daily partner here in the Guyana Space Center, and our contractors in French Guyana, and all employees at the launch facility. And of course, let me pay my tribute to my Iron Space colleagues for the latest success of an Iron vehicle, the 292nd launch overall for the Iron Space family of launchers. <clears throat> Given the availability of satellites, we are two more launches ahead to bringing this year to a successful conclusion and I would now like to welcome to the stage our customers and partners. Todd, please. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Wow, what another successful launch. We're very happy and very relieved, I can tell you. Our epic journey began nearly five years ago when we announced InnoSat's commitment to high throughput design that was open architecture and backwards compatible. In that time, Boeing and Arian Space have been with us every step of the way. On behalf of InnoSat's employees around the world, I'd like to express sincere appreciation for the teams at Boeing and Arian Space for the commitment to mission success and to InnoSat. I'd also like to recognize the Intelsat team for their work, technical excellence, and leadership to make Intelsat 37E a success. Our Intelsat Epic fleet was designed 
to transform satellite technology and drive opportunity and growth. And Inlosat 37E continues that transformation by delivering new innovations that will unlock new applications for our customers. Thank you again to our customers for sharing in our exciting day and taking this epic journey with us. Once again, to the success of Inlosat 37E. Thank you all. Eighty-one launches in a row. Congratulations. Excellent performance. Hi, I'm Lincoln Day, Senior Executive Director at SSL for the BSAT 4A program. Our new group president, uh, Dario Zamarian, asked me to represent him today. Congratulations to everyone involved with the success of the VA-239 mission, along with uh, Mr. Zamarian and our recently retired Ms. Uh, President, Mr. Chelly. I would personally like to thank BSAT for putting their confidence in SSL for building this important new satellite, BSAT 4A. It has been my personal pleasure to work with the BSAT team, competent, knowledgeable, uh, very good uh, engineers, and their lead manager, program manager, Nakagawa-san, and his talented team of engineers have been a pleasure to work with for the last two years. I find that we found a very strong relationship between our companies, and that we've produced quite a capable and efficient satellite. BSAT 4A is the world's first 8K satellite. It'll provide advanced television services for Japan, and it'll provide 4K and 8K satellite television for the 2020 Olympics that happened in Tokyo, as well as the Paralympics that happened in that summer. So we congratulate them. We're looking forward to them rolling out this new standard uh, for Japan and ultimately the rest of the world. Also, we'd like to congratulate our co-passenger, both Inlsat and BSAT. We always know how important every mission is for our industry, and we look forward to their continued success with their launch and their mission. Finally, a sincere thanks to Ariana Spas. Again, it's an impressive uh, 81 launches in a row, but equally impressive, this is the 64th mission that SSL has worked with, uh, with Ariana Spas. We started back in 1983, 35 years ago with NLSAT 501. Quite a good relationship that both of our teams can be quite proud of. So with that, uh, we appreciate your demonstrated excellence. We appreciate all the recovery that it took to get us to this point. And most importantly, we appreciate a very good ride. So thank you all. If you worked with Arion, we appreciate all your effort. If you worked with Boeing, NLSAT, SSL, or BSAT, again, we appreciate it. A lot of effort goes into these launches and to have them successful, it's just a fantastic feeling. So congratulations to everybody and thank you again. Bonsoir, Monsieur Dame. Uh, je m'appelle uh, Juan Pedersen et je suis de la société Boeing. Bon, je parle un peu français, mais je vais quand même faire mes remarques uh, en anglais. Sorry. <laughs> Congratulations to our customer Intelsat and launch provider, Ariane Space, for an amazing liftoff and separation of Intelsat 37E and the accompanying BSAT 4A satellite. And may I say congratulations to BSAT and to Space Systems Laurel. Uh, wonderful uh, to work with them as well, both of them. This is the fourth uh, Intelsat epic new generation satellite that Boeing has built for our longtime customer, Intelsat. For more than 50 years, Boeing and Intelsat have been working together and innovating together. And I've actually been working for 30 years of that, 50 years. Uh, so I'm very privileged to once again work with Intelsat. We are proud of the fact that Boeing and its heritage companies built more than 40 satellites for Intelsat over the years, with more than 10 in operation today that were built by Boeing. Included in that number are three of the four EPIC satellites we built for Intelsat that are already on orbit and providing service to Intelsat's customer. The Intelsat 37E satellite, which launched today, carries Boeing's digital payload. Boeing is leading the digital transformation in the satellite industry with our digital payload technology. The Boeing digital payload Technology gives our customers the flexibility to adapt to surges in demand for connectivity when and where it is needed. 
as well as adapt to any changes in their business needs and or missions. The Intelsat 37E satellite bus is a flight proven Boeing 702 medium power satellite that includes flexible architecture and capabilities. Thank you to Arian Space. Merci for yet another successful launch, which is more than 50 launches, plus de 50 lancements, qu'on a ensemble, uh, Ariane et more Boeing. More 50 launches together. Thank you to the Boeing team. In particular, I want to just mention Posey Medina, uh, Bill Butts, and Grant Swenson. Great job. They've done much uh, hard work. We had quite a lot of hard work on this campaign and they were dedicated to the program. <clears throat> and thank you again to Intelsat for putting your trust in Boeing to deliver a quality and reliable product. Thank you. Merci. Arigato. Thanks to all. Merci, Ron. So again, congratulations to all for this outstanding success. We will be back on November the 7th with Vega to perform the third mission of the year with our lightweight vehicle. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your evening. Nice speeches from the customers. The next to the last Ariane 5 launch of this year, a success all around. And with that good news, that will do it for us from Kuru. And we're going to have some fine shots of a final launch replay for you. And over those fine shots, we will say our goodbye. Ariane Space's ninth launch of the year, a big success, making it, as Lincoln Day said, 81 straight successful launches in a row for the Ariane 5 vehicle. She continues to set records. So congratulations to everybody involved. Two new satellites on their way, beginning lives in space and bringing new services and new technologies to more people around the world, Intelsat 37E and BSAT 4A. Our next launch, November 7th, as Luce Fabregat has said, that will be the third Vega mission of the year. You won't want to miss it. We'll be here. We hope you will be too. Till then, on behalf of everybody here at Europe's Spaceport, Joshua Jam was saying thank you for being with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We sure did. And we look forward to being with you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Allez, bye. Et décollage.